Hi, this is Joe from laxplaybook.com, and I'm here with my friend Jeremy Darin. How's it going, Jeremy? I'm doing well, Joe. Thank you. How are you? Good. So a while ago, I was doing a podcast, which I kind of let go of, and a lot of people requested that I resume it because, as you guys know, what I like to talk about is X's and O's. I don't really love to talk about recruiting seminars or the latest gear or um, things of that nature that more relates to kids, such as travel teams and all that. Sometimes we just want to talk about the thing we love the most, strategizing lacrosse. And Jeremy, you love that too, right? Absolutely. Offensive coordinators just love to tinker with uh, X's and O's and and uh, and seeing what you, different options you can get from your players and and tinker with it at practice, tinker with it at home on paper and see what works and uh, and and also use it to share with the world. Right. So and hopefully we love to share ideas and the best part about this Facebook page which I've worked on and the site is the friends I've made around the country. I met some people I work with in Columbia through this page, and I met Jeremy through the page. You've been responding to my post for a while, which I appreciate, and you followed up with me the other day about doing this podcast, correct? Yes, sir. I think it's I think it's a tremendous idea. Yeah, so we started talking on the phone, and I'm just hugely impressed by your background and what you have to offer, and the biggest thing that we saw eye to eye on the moment we clicked, where that little aw came between the two of us was when you said there really is nothing wrong you could do. As long as everybody's on the same page and listening to the coach, there's a lot of great strategies that work out there, and nobody should really be saying one thing's wrong or one thing's right. Uh, absolutely, Joe. I, 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 you know, I spend a lot of time reading more than I do writing, um, and uh, what I see more often than not are, are people that – that dropped the term absolute, absolute, and and I, I just I think especially in our sport in lacrosse that there's really there's really not a lot of room for the word absolute. Um, it, it just doesn't fit uh, with the tradition of the sport, and it and it certainly doesn't uh, allow for kids to to run, and play fast, and have fun, uh, which is the you know the goal of this sport anyway to. to to be successful, kids got to have fun doing it. enjoyment as coaches. It's not just about the kids. It's us, too. We want to have fun drawing up those and things, and we don't want to limit ourselves. We want to be creative, too. Absolutely, and, and to see kids execute that is, is outstanding as well. So which brings us to our conversation today. But before I do that, I want everybody out there to know who this Jeremy Durin guy is that we're talking to. So I'm speaking with Jeremy, and Jeremy, I got this bio that I put together for you. Correct me if I'm wrong with any of it but I think there's a lot to talk about with you. You're a pretty accomplished guy. So Jeremy's a 15-year NCAA lacrosse veteran who's worn many hats as offensive coordinator, defensive assistant, goalie and face-off coach, and whose DNA exists with four different national championship programs. In addition, Coach Durin has had the unique perspective of coaching at every level of NCAA competition, starring as the head coach, initiator, and architect of the most successful JUCO program in the country, the Onondaga Community College, Following the resurrection of the OCC program, he spent the next portion of his career in D3 with Oneont and Oswego State. Add in three years at Division III powerhouse Limestone College, even a stint helping former Limestone student athlete of who his he was hired as the Cortland State women's head lacrosse coach to win their first national championship this past season. He was named Mid-State Coach of the Year in 2001 and twice as offensive coordinator, credited with the top-scoring offense in Oneonta and Limestone, respectively. And at the pinnacle of his career, Coach Duran was an assistant coach with one of the most successful programs in Division One history, the famous Syracuse Orange. That's an awesome background, and I hope I did it justice. Did I do well there? Did outstanding. I, I think if if I could broadcast around that that around the country on a megaphone, uh, my 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 phone would ring a little bit. <laughs> thank thank you very much, Joe. Well, it's an awesome background. I really wanted to do you justice because I'm hugely honored you're taking the time to talk to us. And what I want to focus on today was your most recent stint at Syracuse. We want to talk about that. And one of the things that got us talking on the phone is. When we were having fun talking X's and O's, as two coaches, middle-aged guys do, is we were talking about offense to run and sets. And I was looking at the Syracuse offense you ran. And I was Mm -hmm. saying, I'm always trying to break down 
figure it out. You know, it would have a one four one, a two three one, or a one three two. And you turned to me and said, "There actually are no sets there." Where I was like, "Oh boy, here we go back to the drawing board." And that's kind of the nature we want to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, it's it's what what came out early uh, back in. Um, uh, 2005, 2006. Joe and and Coach uh, Coach Donahue deserves you know a, a ton of credit with this um, as an architect and and uh, and really just a, a an innovator of of a, a, just a ton a ton of uh, the the attributes of Syracuse's success with an offense and and the motion offense concepts that he that he developed um, and, and that I took after. Uh, I, I my my time with with Syracuse and and took along with me and and what I did is is take the basis of those that motion offense the setless offense and and certainly tweak it and turn it into my own into some aspects and and what it is as as I'm sure you you do and and you do very well is uh, on your website is is take portions of other people's offense and make it work within this. Uh, motion offense as well, um, and that 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 in itself ha- has really been the the benchmark uh, of of what I've developed into now is this is is my m- what I call my motion offense, um, a- a- and w- you know piggybacking off of piggybacking off of everything that I had learned from from Coach Donahue and Coach Desco and Coach Simmons and Coach Rogers at Syracuse University. So one thing you said before I got on this call, you said before we get into my offense that you want to teach, you said let's step back and talk about the motion offense principles. Just before we get into specifics of what you do, people have to understand in your mind the principles of emotion. And right. my initial thought when I thought of emotion offense, I ran that triangle motion. It's in one of my sure. videos. And it Mm -hmm. was an action causes another action away from the ball. That was my initial Mm -hmm. definition. And Mm -hmm. we wrote out some bullet points you wanted to point out right here. Um, First and foremost is the, uh, you know, the, the concept of core itself. Um, and, and I gave core a name because I, I believe that, you know, everything, Everything that you give a, uh, you know, that you give a kid and, and that you that you take on yourself, uh, you know, you, you give it meaning uh, that that in not just a name, uh, it, it it certainly adds value to um, what it is uh, that you're doing for yourself, and and it gets kids' attention more so as well. So uh, when you talk about core movements, the core is 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 basically the c- continuous. For this off ball uh, reads and execution until a goal is scored, hopefully. <laughs> and the O is um, off ball movement, um, which is essential to this offense. Okay. Uh, the R is for reads, uh, and the reads are what everybody off ball is doing um, while there's a dodge being. Uh, be, uh, happening or uh, or a carry um, or whatever's going on uh, that everybody's reading to react to uh, the situation in the e and uh, that leaves you with execution um, and execution is exactly that um, it's it's define it's 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 taking taking everything that you've learned um, from the core offense core mo- core movements. Uh, using them to the best of your ability to put you in the most advantageous position on the field and executing it to the best of your ability. Uh, if done properly, it, uh, it, it does has great results. So we got our core of the motion offense, continuous off-ball movement, reads, and execution. And before we got on, you had me write out these three things up top. It's not a play. It's not a formation. Teach them to play instead of teaching them plays and learning those skill sets. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's so important, Joe. That um, that that kids learn to to play lacrosse. Um, what we get into um, the fun part for coaches, it it is by far is is the dabbling and X's and O's and and getting things. You know, when you're either scouting teams or you have 
player or two that you know that you can piggyback off of to use plays to your advantage. But the, the, the most important thing is to, to, to really just teach them how to play lacrosse first and foremost. And, and even at the, the elite college level, one would assume that these, you know, that, that, get, that guys come in, you know, prepared and, and ready to play lacrosse at, uh, and, 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 and have all that knowledge already. And quite honestly, often they don't. Um, so, so it's, can it's I play making that. I'm advocate with you for a second. Yeah, sure. So for me, I mean, one of the things you said is not a formation. And obviously on my site, when I talk to my peers about coaching, I talk to players, I say sets all the time, you know, one, four, one, two, yep. three, one. Mm-hmm. And the reason I do that is because it gives them a general idea of spacing. And it gives me sure. a platform to teach, you know, V cuts, all these other essentials you're talking about. And without mm-hmm. that initial formation, I'd almost find it more difficult to teach them all these fundamentals of lacrosse because that formation gives them that spacing. And without that formation where I could say, hey, make sure you're in such and such area, I'm pretty confident when the ball goes behind, a lot of my kids mm-hmm. end up floating down towards the goal and nobody's up top. And then it ends up being a big mishmash of, of right, big and hodgepodge. Of, a big hodgepodge. <laughs> yeah. And, have it, and be able to, for a coach to say a one four one circle set or two, 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 it gives them that principle formation, which forms my platform to teach them so many fundamentals of the game, clearing through when a dodge comes. But you're saying yeah. drop that formation. No, not necessarily drop the formation because obviously everything has to have a starting point. Um, and in order to have guys go out on the field and, and start that execution of the motion offense, you have to give them somewhere to start. You can't just say go out and pick a you know pick a random spot on the field because, you know, it, it, I mean, it, at the highest level, guys understand spacing a lot more. But like you said, when you're when you're teaching younger younger guys, high school kids, uh, spacing is one of the biggest issues that you have. And so to start with the initial set is one thing. To finish. Is a whole, is entirely different, and that's where the motion offense becomes an entirely different animal, in that it doesn't be it it it, it does it evolves by the virtue of the core movements, versus saying to your guys, okay, we're in a one three two, and you're gonna you know dodge you know with your 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 top top right midfielder and you know, and, and push one guy out and do whatever so that you twist into a one four one or whatever it is that you turn in turn it into. This motion concept gives you the ability to let the guys be creative, have freedom under the still the parameters that you run, knowing that space favors offense. That's my one of my you know one of the, my things that I, I I you know chase guys around on the field nonstop when I was uh, w- when I was uh, doing this and 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 screaming you know that space favors offense no guy should be be able to be covered one guy you know one guy should never be able to uh, cover two so so here in this um, motion set where you do start out in some assemblance of a one you know a one three two or a two two or a, so a, a, a even yeah. a circle. So with that being said, let's pick an arbitrary set. Sure. Which one do you um, want to start? Let's, let's 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 pick the you know the most common. I think is you know a one three two. Which by the way, I called two three one. We went over that on the phone too. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm, that's fine. I'm not, uh, not certainly not one to to pick uh, uh, to, to 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 play north versus south on that one. As I said, my friend <laughs> Long Island fight with that to the day he dies. <laughs> and and once again, you also agreed with me. Call it two, three, one, one, three, two. Red, blue, pink, or hippopotamus. As long as the players yeah. know what you're talking about, it doesn't matter. Yes, as long yeah. as it's a uni- as long as it's universally understood with your program, uh, I think you can call it candy cane. It doesn't matter. Right, but just to specify, when Jeremy say one, three, two, I say two, three, one. So if you're looking at things on my site, I have these things like this under the two, three, one tab on my site. So, Jeremy, in your offense, you have six core movements that you really wanted me to go over with you as we teach your philosophy here. So the first one you said um, was a trail, but more important than that, 
you were very animate that, Joe, make sure you star this. Everything starts with a dodge or a carry. So you want to elaborate? Yeah, yeah I, I think, you know, what's important for uh, when you're teaching this offense is to, to you know, define, number one, what, you know, when and where this is going to happen. And, and the, the defining it really just means just, set, you know, who's going to start this, and anybody can start the dodge. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, it doesn't matter uh, if you, you know, if you have – if you have four, five great Dodgers, you know, then let any, you know, any one of them dodge first. If you know, if you have a, you know, if you have someone that 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 tends to be a very good primary Dodger, then you obviously let them go first. But this is, you know, this is something that that you you know that you have to drill home is that when you dodge, even when you and or carry, you really want to dodge, and you're dodging to score. It's you know, even though even though guys understand that when you take that initial dodge, generally you're not going to be the, the guy that's putting the ball on the back of the net. Um, like it's I always say off of my a, guys, yeah. dodge to initiate. You know, dodge to score, right. but be ready. It kind of initiates thing. Um, right. And I was actually talking to Lauren Smith. I don't know if you remember him, Princeton guy. From Absolutely. Japan. He always told me how Princeton would initiate from the same spot, the top right, over and over again in their championship runs. But yep. the result of it would be different every time. But it would always start, and then he would say, we're going to start with something very scripted, but then lacrosse happens. You know, when, sure. I mean, he loved to say that. And by the way, he's one of my favorite yeah. guys in the world. I don't know if you ever met him. Um, he's <laughs> a very interesting guy and phenomenal lacrosse mind as well. So it, 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 it's a great – that's a great way to put it because it's, it's really what's happening in this offense. Yeah, so let's look at this. So if everything starts here, let's first talk about the trail. So you have these six core movements of your offense. So let's look at my screen. And one of yeah. the things that I'm going to go over with you as well, and we talked about this on the phone a few days ago, is how do you highlight your feature player? We don't have to address this just now, but it's something I want to think about. When you were at Syracuse, who was the main guy? Like Who was the, the impetus of the offense? Um, I, I think you'd have to give – Credit to uh, uh, both Stephen Brooks and Mike Lavelle um, okay. as being the two most dominant uh, players on the field. So um, I'm probably going to ask you within your offense, how would you use them in this set, knowing they're your your feature players? Because we have a lot of everybody's um, equal, everybody's equal, but we both know at the end of the day, <laughs> there's always somebody who's able to do a little more than the rest of the guys. <laughs> these group, these group of guys, uh, I, I can honestly say that, un unfortunately, I can't, can't, I can't, can't uh, give too much of them not, not enough credit because they all were pretty damn good. But yeah, well, welcome um, to they, uh, but <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they were uh, what, what, what ultimately we, we would want to have happen is you know, s you know, Stephen was a an extremely fast. Uh, and, and very good shooting midfielder. Um, to have him initiate isn't a, isn't such a bad thing um, because what that initi initial Dodger is doing, he's drawing a lot of attention. Then what we would probably want Mike Lavelle doing is to be two passes away without setting him, putting him in that position, um, unless you know we had a timeout where we could draw something up and and you know implement that in. Uh, Mike's lacrosse IQ is extraordinarily high, um, and you know he would know uh, to get himself in a position where he could do, you know, be a pass pass away because that second pass is generally where a lot of good things happen. Yeah, the, um, the score is two passes away from the dodge. I love that line. Correct. So yeah, and, before we go any further, with that I, I don't want to lose mm -hmm. sight of learning your offense, your philosophy. So mm -hmm. I got up here on the screen. You know, number one has the ball. And the first thing you have is the trail here. The trail, this mm -hmm. motion offense. Yep. So I, I think it's essential um, to to to. It, it cannot be you know driven home you know hard enough that the trail is such an important component here because the trail becomes number one, you know the number one purpose of it is support. So let's and start. You, what is the trail before you, the the value of it? Let's just define what is it. So number one, Dodge is the, the alley. So number one dodge of the, the the alley that means number the number two 
is going to start trailing behind him in a position where number one would be able to to spike back quick and get the get number two the ball if he got you know a fight a double fired on him or just you know saw an advantageous uh, position where uh, the 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 field was becoming unbalanced and 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 number two would have a good dodge. Okay. Um, so he would want to be nice and you know nice and high in a good position to uh, to receive that pass behind him. Is this um, where you want him? To about, I mean, not to get over deep. I, I would probably want him a little bit higher. Okay. Um, so more yeah, like just that. right there. Again, you know, I, I'll say it over and over again, space favors offense, you know. So, you know, his man may cheat down on that, but that's okay. It, it, because if his man cheats down and then that throwback occurs to the trail man, then he's got a really he, – he gets to build up a lot of speed on his dodge and, and you know, he gets going – down that left alley, and uh, you know he might might actually end up getting a really good dodge and shot off of that. Now you said um, space benefits the offense, correct? Yes. Yes. So by space, having space. a guy follow him, are you not taking yeah. away that space because essentially you're bringing his defenseman following that dodger? I'm I'm trailing him, but I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not up his cleats. Uh, so right. to speak. You said that very nicely. Um, you were about to say something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you we were going with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted to make sure, yeah, we, you know, the listeners here this just understand that the spacing still, you know, we, we want to be able to make a safe pass, not too far, but we also don't want it to be a 10-yard pass, you know, where it's, you know, it, we're rifling it at a guy and expecting him to be able to handle that and do something with it. Right. Because you understand you know, my so, point. I didn't want the guy trailing so closely where it's easy for his defender to double from behind. Because when I teach my guys to double from adjacent, I'm almost looking yep. for the Dodger to have his back turned to you. And I say, when he's back turned to you, mm-hmm. go get him. And I worry yep. that this trail is making it easier for that adjacent guy to almost what I like to call stalk. The Dodger, sure. you know, and then yep. jump. And what you're saying is to counter that, have good spacing like number two does. So if he does double right. to turn and then almost counter dodge the opposite side. Dodge opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Dodge opposite. You know, right. that's that's the that's the, the, the kick, you know, that you get when, when you decide to cheat over and num you know, number one's gonna remember we're gonna he's gonna be continuing his dodge down that alley, so that space is gonna continue, you know, continue to get farther down. That midfielder that decided to play over, that defensive midfielder decided to play over, is going to go deeper as well, which makes it all the more um, valuable for number two to keep that space. So he'll end up, you know, keeping that same, probably about 18, you know, about 18 between him and uh, number one. But as as that goes down and, 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 you know, number one gets you know, takes that dodge and, and I want to make sure that I emphasize on a dodge uh, that we, you know, we teach guys to dodge as far as your man is willing to go. Right. Um, okay. So. Does that bring us to the next point with the pop or not yet? Or is there still you want more? Uh, the pop, the but we can, we, it, it's, uh, that's not in any, it's, it's not in any, any order right there. Um, what we would do next in this particular set uh, right now would be with with player number three. That's exactly what I was about to bring to us. Like so, this guy's dodging, and he's doing his thing, and I have number three sitting here. So what do yep. I teach number three to do in this? Uh, and again, again, and it, it's it's a you know I said like I said dealer's choice, but you know it's a situation where what is your defender doing? Is your defender cheating and trying to go up and play number one? And that's in that case, what we would do what's called a push. Okay, so and I got number. I'm doing an, so if he's doing an adjacent slide, this defender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're saying number three should do a push, which no, goes push down towards goal line extended. And the nature of that term, it's almost as if number one is pushing him down, pushing him out Correct. of his spot. Okay. Correct. So that's if he um, does an adjacent slide, but now yep. if. Three. If this D man stays with this guy and they do yep. crease slide, then what yep. do you want number three doing? We'd want him. We'd want him drifting out the backside. Which means so we'd want to take him through. Yep. 
we would want to take him all the way through and drift him out to where, uh, you know, uh, basically end up uh, on the back side of the crease. Um, and he might end up, you know, depending on what happens, he might end up even farther. Okay. Uh, he might he might end up coming right up, right back out and up and and pop up under number two. But we'll get to that in, in a minute. So without, for the purpose over, of this presentation, where would you like him to go? Behind the goal or to the crease? Let's push him down right now for just just purposes, so that uh, viewers can kind of see what happens, how big the offense gets. Okay. Um, so he pushed, which is one yeah. of our core movements. Yep. All right. So now, what's the next guy you'd like to point out? So, so we're we're is, kind of working. Here? Yeah, yeah. As a dodger, you know, we you know again dodging as far as that man's willing to go. Um, you know, and and they're pro, you know, which is probably going to be just a little bit above goal line extended. Um, Can and, I ask you a question before we go a little further? Sure. What's going on with number six? Because now number three is pushed behind. Is he not yep. in? So where do you want six to go? Well, six in the right now, it, because we just had a push. Okay, now number six has the has the choice. Okay, to um, take any of those core movements um, that he wants. What I'm what 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 I'm thinking that he would what, what he would want to do in this situation is that he would he would want to be the drift man, and he would want to drift out in a way. Okay, so let's define up. drift. Drift is okay, so. So a drift for number six would would he would kind of leak out towards goal line extended, but uh, right, perfect. Okay, perfect. Good. All right, so that answered my question. So now continue what you were saying before. So number one's going down. Three pushed. Yep. Six drifted. Two trailed, yep. and one yep. dodged. <laughs> in this, yeah, in this situation, now we would obviously the ball would move at this point in time. Okay, so we want to win know, three or two. And we would go down with number three. Okay. Okay. And and that would be, we would really probably be a quick, uh, because numbers, because we had six go, yeah, exactly, we had six go and drift through. We'd want that ball to get to him as quick as, you know, as quick as possible. Um, which, again, now, so he was a drift man. The rule of thumb in this is that you can do any core movement, but you can't duplicate the core movement that the man adjacent to you just did. So that just means number five can't drift, but he can push. So that means if he pushes back a little bit... Um, now push would be here, and drift would be correct. where? Over here? Uh, drift, yeah. For him, drift would be would be a clear through so that so that six could actually get a so, so that six could actually uh, dodge um, free and clear okay, of so number five. Number but we're five gonna play push. we're we're gonna mess with his defender a little bit in this situation. Um, watch, I'll show you in a minute. And number four, which we haven't done yet, he's what's gonna do what's good, what's called a pop. Okay, so what's so a he, pop? Let's define that. Pop is just a is really a straight line up towards uh, you know a good five to six yards up, uh, not not near ball. We want to maintain the space where we start where he started, but we wouldn't want to go straight up. Okay, so is this a good angle I just took there? Uh, we don't want to go. We don't want to go at an angle. We want to almost go directly straight up towards um, towards the. Uh, um, Restraint line. Okay, so straight uh, up like that. Right there. Yeah, right about. Yeah, that's right. Good, okay. right there. Good spacing, right there. So now six. That gives us that opportunity. We had that pass, pass, right? Yeah. And now this gives us that opportunity to turn this, turn that corner, and be a dodger. Okay, so he's um, moving. He's got his sweet moves going on. Yep. And somebody's got to make a decision here. Um, you know, one just, you know, one has occupied a defenseman, possibly two, um, depending on how well the slide went. And we moved, just moved the ball twice, you know, rather quickly. So the, now the decision's got to, you know, be made either, you know, his man's playing him well enough that he can't get to the cage, but he's still going to, somebody's going to still come down and drop help, which means it's probably going to come off of number five. So his man's going to help, so which which allows number five to actually 
do a, a flash. Let me get okay. my defenseman back in the picture. So we got number five's defenseman here, and you're so you yep. think it'd be more likely in this situation. So number six is arguably trying to get to the five and five, right, to make yep. a move. Correct. And you're saying, in your experience, normally you would find the help coming from five instead of four guys, because I would have thought the the help would be coming from number four with a second slide coming from one or two. A lot of people, because number four, number four's man was just responsible also for number one as well, and that ball just moved so quick. And naturally, the defenseman for number five is going to be down lower anyway. Got it. Um, because backside midfield defense, uh, good backside defensive midfield defense it tells you to be down um, when you're away from the ball. So that's where that help defense comes from, which which allows number four's defenseman to stay home and not leave the, the second most dangerous guy on the field, um, which is the crease guy, obviously. The, the, the man with the ball is the most dangerous right now, and the second most dangerous guy is, is, is number four, in my opinion, it's, which is the crease guy. Um, right. Okay, so the defenseman comes down to help. Yep, and that and then what that allows is number five just to do what's a, just a quick flash, which is a, a movement towards the ball, and it's to to a quick step down shot, um, and and it would be a, a a one two step, you know, to look for that shot right there. Now would this exactly. go under that? I mean, I'm going to throw out a lot of just general coaching terms that we've learned since you were young. Would you call this following your slide? Uh yeah, absolutely. I I think your you know your 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 you know lacrosse IQ tells you naturally to let your defenseman go down. Okay, see what he's going you know see what he's going to do because right now you you were in a spot, you left your spot, you drifted up to 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 see if your defenseman was going to stay home and play defense like he's supposed to, or if he's going to stay with you. If he's going to stay with you, then that then that gave number six the opportunity to, you know, to dodge to the cage like he wanted to. But as a good defenseman should is he's he's playing down, so that allows number five to watch that defenseman. All of a sudden he's you know he's getting caught playing up number six, you know, having to play really having to play two you know two men, and giving number five an opportunity to get a shot. Right. And I wanted to use that term follow slide because when you first threw this at me on the phone the other day, I was like, wow, is this quantum physics? I'm just blown away and confused. And you said, it's not that hard. And as I'm seeing it, as we're talking through it, and what occurred to me is follow the slide or, you know, um, all these terms that we learn anyway. So it's actually, right. as you see it, it's not that complicated. It's a lot of things that we're used to teaching our kids. I think sure. I just have to get used to some of the terminology and the flow of it so I get used right. to it. But when you really break it down, as you said to me on the phone, it's not as foreign as it first looks. No, no. It sounds – it does sound a, a lot, you know, just, you know, when you first, you know, talk about these things, it's just – that it you know one of those impossible things unless you have all these great athletes. But what are really what we're all we're doing is we're teaching fundamental lacrosse. Right, um, done at a high level. It, done at a high level, absolutely. Um, you know, but to say that to say that um, you know a younger high school team can't do this, I I you know minus the ability obviously to pass and catch, which. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that you have to be able to do to play the game successfully. Um, uh, we can hide a couple guys in this offense, you know, maybe two. <laughs> um, but, but you really, you know, everybody's got to pretty much be able to take equal roles uh, right. in so this. Right, so that for this offense. So as most people who know me know, my team is generally a mid-level high school team. I'm in a newer area, you know, and, and with mid-level high school teams, generally in our leagues, you usually find mm -hmm. two guys are just far superior than the others. Two guys are so right. in the middle, and two guys you're like, "Geez, well, I need a fifth and sixth guy. Let's put this kid in." You know, who right? Really right. doesn't. Yeah. Who really can't keep up? So a lot of my strategies revolve around hiding a player, making him useful, with setting picks, just off ball, and really feature on two guys. But this right. offense really needs everybody to be competent. Everybody needs to be competent. Um, 
and, and, and but not excellent. Um, but you, you know, would say if you have two guys, you really can't keep up. But you know, you have to play six guys. This offense may not work for you if there's two guys who are really like, oh, what's a restraining box line? Oh yeah, I mean if they're if they're if if they're at that level, if you got two at that level, then I then I'm you know I'm gonna I would say I would pull back on this um, yeah, just because it's you know it is uh, you know it is asking a lot. For somebody that doesn't understand a restraint line or, or something like that, to, to make a point, like, yeah. they know what the restraint uh, line is. But you get my point. There's two guys right. that are just at a different level, especially with travel teams and club teams. You have four right. kids who are just playing the season, and I got two kids who play year round who have goals to play at Syracuse and Duke, and so right. you kind of have to adapt. Anyway, so right. I, I interrupted you there. Um, so what were we talking about? So we had five step down for a shot. So if I step down hypothetically, um, yeah. you know, and and you know, if and if it and if we don't get a shot, it's it's actually not the worst thing in the world because now what we're starting to get is what I really like about this offense. Okay. Um. So five know, has the ball now. Right, and what we what we've had now, what we had is you know again we're going to support, so we're going to you know number two is going to come over just a little bit to support that ball so that, you know, number five can make that pass to him. Okay. Um, but, you know, with the with the ability still to make a nice top dodge up there. Right. So he has the um, option to make that pass or to continue on and get a top side dodge. Right. Okay. And, you know, this is this is where, you know, we really, you know, really can start tinkering with things and and things that I really uh, enjoy doing um, is 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 taking you know taking attackmen uh, you know and putting them in non-traditional positions to dodge. Uh, same with midfielders, but uh, but real real you know realistically with with the attackmen, I love getting attackmen with you know I call an outvert um, the, instead of a you know instead of a traditional midi invert. Um, so as we you know as that ball would go up to number two. Okay, so let's send it up to two. Right. You know, and he would, you know, he would be dodging opposite again. So number one on this, in you know, in this situation, you know, he's going to drift, you know, through. Drift would be him going towards the middle. Correct. Now who's trailing? I don't want to miss that original point you yep. made. So yep. we're not going to, we're not going to lose it. We're going to, we're going to take it with number, with the number four this time. Okay. Okay. Four is going to pop. And then trail, okay. It's almost like a reverse um, V cut. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you're looking at it from the from the upside upside down, it's it's exactly that. Okay, and um, fuck, dodging and, and put on his sweet moves. Yeah, and take you know take one you know take number one and put him backside post. I, I I try to get when guys when I get guys to drift through, I always want them to go to the back pipe. From where they started. Now the term um, one is using out of your set of six core of movements now, which drifting. Okay, and 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 you may be about to get to this, but the one you haven't mentioned yet, I don't think is mirror. Nope. Yeah, we're gonna do it right now. Oh, good. So we're on the same page. Great minds think alike. Yep. yep. Okay. So one, what do we say? He's drifting still. Drifting. Yep. Get the guy out of here. We don't need him. Yep. Okay. And now number six. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Number we got number three adjacent. Okay, we're gonna push him. Okay, just gonna push him down a little bit further back pipe so that he can. After number two dodges, yep, perfect. Um, so as number two completes his dodge, he'll have the option to throw down to him. Okay. Number six. Um, we don't want to. I don't. Don't. Let's not put the ball with number three just yet because I okay. want you to. I want you to get this mirror concept here. Uh, number six, what we're, we want to do with him is we want to do, it, it, which what is that flash cut again? Okay, but we want and we want to flash off of number one and up high. Yes, nice high pop right there. Uh, nice high flash. Okay. Now the mirror comes with number five. Now number all your five teams is do this on the fly. They know the flash mirror. Yeah, yeah. They, they you know, if it, 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 they'll they'll see a certain set 
developing, and they'll just, you know, they just kind of inherently, you know, as time goes on, they can, you know, they'll understand where to go. Um, you know, on the same token, you can tell, you know, you can script this from the sideline as well. You know, I can, you know, I can tell just by using the core movement technology, uh, core movement um, uh, principles. Ver, uh, uh, principles. <laughs> Thank you. I can tell them where to go on the field just by using those, you know, using those those six movements. So yeah. with number five right now yeah. uh, uh, on the field, I I and I'm saying mirror. Okay, he's going to mirror what number two is doing. Okay, so, so okay. now what you see is you know he's in a straight line across from number two. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, would be uh, a, a adjacent to uh, number two on the opposite side of the field. Just you know, so if you cut them, if you cut the field in half, that you'd it'd be a he'd be a mirror uh, of of number two. Right. Um. So you know what 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 we create in this situation is uh, you what you have sometimes is you have. Because number six went, you know, and aggressively flashed up, and we know that we have the option always to turn back and spike that ball to number six. If, you know, if his man doesn't follow him, um, that there, you know, that that's a that that's a possibility. So his man's got to respect that. Number one, his man, you know, is primarily responsible right now for the help with the number two. So what you're gonna see. Is a pass between number two and number five because of that mirror. That's a potential in this as well. A skip pass. It would be a skip pass, absolutely. Ooh, skip passes scare me at my level. <laughs> uh, you you, you, you coached high school. I know you've coached in Syracuse, but you also coached high school, so you know what I'm talking about. Hey, when I started at OC, the Onondaga Community College program, uh, we had 14 guys. And and trust me, that not all of them could not all of them could play lacrosse. <laughs> right. So you remember what it was at that at that yeah. level, and you know once yes. you have kids at that level, or you have the fourteen kids, and you've started programs, you've coached at every level. Yes. You know at that level, it's a very dicey thing to give kids the green light to skip pass. Yes. It, once you tell them go ahead, that's the that's where the danger is. It's, you know, it's, this is again something, you know, that if you, you know, if it's, you see it, and this is something that you practice, uh, you know, practice, and you see it there, then you may, you know, you make that pass. Um, you know, if it's not absolutely there, it's, uh, it, then you absolutely don't make that pass, you know? Right. Um, it, you know, it's, I, 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 I think kids with a, you know, with a green light, they want to make that pass every time, you know? Because because it really looks good when it when it when it when it works, you know. On the same token, what we've what we've started to create here is again, when you talk about you know sets or set lists, this kind of still looks like a set, doesn't it? It does. It, so it, if it, I was it, scouting it, 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 when I do my yeah. film breakdown right now, yeah. and I probably would have described it as such to put it in terms that I understand and I'm used to. I would have said you evolved from a two three one to a one four one, right? Like you did a natural uh, evolution, even though it wasn't what you were doing. But right. for my purpose of scouting, when I talk to my fellow coaches, if I was playing this right. team, playing Syracuse, yeah. I would have said they're motioning from a two three one to one four one, even though that's not what you're doing. But yes, to your right. point, that's as somebody who uses sets a lot, that's what I'm seeing right. through my eyes. Right. And and what changes the, the what changes in this whole thing is that you know we can go back and uh, 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 from that start again and but we can we can make you know number number two number three the two first adjacent guys do something completely different and make it total and 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 make this look totally different and not be look like a one four one it's so all in what the players choose to do. And I could totally see right now and tell me if my thinking is right as I'm trying to think creatively along with you within your framework, your offense. If we were going to start this over again, it looks like it'd be very easy 
Two passes oh, yeah. three, three to five. Six pops out. Yep. Pass it up there. Number four gets the ball. And we're right back in that set we started out in. He's got to move a little, obviously. But we're right where yep. we started when we started this conversation with a dodge from the top right. And Correct. we could basically do that whole thing over again. I don't know if you were going with that thinking if I went on a different path. Let me know. No, you're you're no, you're absolutely right. Um, and you know because the spacing remains, you know, if the spacing if the spacing remains true, and you follow the core movements, and you don't, and and note that the next adjacent person doesn't duplicate the core move because if if number two pops and number one pops, they end up in the same spot. We can't have that. Can and I ask a question? That, sure. This is relying on a lot of kids knowing what they're doing, being well coached, and being on it and understand their moves. As mm-hmm. you and I know, this isn't Disneyland or lacrosse utopia where every kid knows everything. Every once right. in a while, things turn into a mess. Yep. Is there a call or something you do where, you, where it's your version of like, whoa, what's going on here? Start over, reset, get back into that initial set. Because when we started this conversation, yep. we were talking about Lauren Smith. We were saying, yeah, yeah start with a structure. A two through one, yes. or one for one. So, is there a call or something where you do with basically your version of like this looks messed up? What are you guys it'd doing? Be a, <laughs> it would be a yellow. Uh, it would be a yellow call, which means pump the brakes, and then we would just and we would say cycle, and that would mean everybody blows out. Okay, so number two, number number two goes out. Number three goes out. Out? You mean like this? Uh, more adjacent to number two, though. Okay. Okay. Number five drops down. Yep. Number six kind of trails. Number five. Okay. Nope, number six kind of trails. Number five. Number one pops. Into here. There you go. Yep. And 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 we cycle the ball. Okay. So Which now that ball goes goes one. You know, up to two to three to five to six to one. And one can carry that ball all the way up top and give everybody an opportunity to get back in a comfort zone position, okay, without the sacrifice of stopping play, so to speak. Right. So that yellow, and I use this, I actually used it for um, when I'm ready to sub, Mm -hmm. is your way of saying slow down. I know it's a lot of coaches use that. Sometimes they want to substitute or sometimes they just want to slow down the game and you're using it for pump the brakes, but I love how we all use the traffic light signals. Right, yes. You know, the, uh, it doesn't no, matter if you're at Syracuse or Mountain View High School in the middle of California. It's it's no. yellow. It's, it's a universal, it's universal, you know, universally known, uh, you right. know, that, that that's caution. We have we have a problem. I love Something, it when you know, kids think they're on it. Uh, another coach I played against called Yellow. And then timeout, the kid comes and like, Coach, I got their calls. Yellow means they're slowing down. I'm like, yeah, gee, yeah. if it does for us and everybody else too. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the 007. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, either that or the other one I heard is tuna for some reason. I don't know. That one, I don't know. You know. So, I, I've just, for some odd reason, I've heard that one. So. Yeah, okay. So you're playing against Hopkins, Syracuse Hopkins. Think you're out of control. It's getting a little chaotic. It's just not flowing. You called yellow, and essentially you guys go into a circle set. Yeah, we just blew everything out so that you know we you know we maintain control of the ball. We've created maximum space, and now we have the option again to take guys and put them strategically where we you know st- strategically where we want them to go or where they want to go. Okay, so now and, I'm gonna and, challenge your X and O's back to the original question. Mm-hmm. So now we called yellow, blew it out, and you need that goal, and we really want things to be executed the way you like. You mm-hmm. have, as you said, I believe you said Stephen Brooks and Kevin Lavelle on the field. Mike. Mike Lavelle. Kevin played for UMass. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you got okay. Stephen Brooks Same. and Mike Lavelle on the field. A few, you know, phenomenal players. You yes. blew it out. Where, what are you looking to do now? So within your offense, you need a goal, whatever. You know, two I'm minutes taking, left before the half. So can you execute that within your core principles now, strategically putting your best players in the best spots to succeed? Yes. Okay, so yes, walk absolutely. me through that. So we got our circle so, blow. Which one's Kevin so, Lavelle and Stephen Brooks? 
Mike, we're gonna make Mike we'll make Mike Lavelle number one, uh, number three. Okay, so he, I'm gonna he, he started out. That was an attackman to start out with, correct? Um, and um, and uh, number one, who's the ball carrier right now? Who was the initial ball carrier in the initial set? Um, we'll make Stephen Brooks. Okay. Put their abbreviations there, so he's number one. Okay. All right. So now, what we'll do? We'll let we'll let Brooksy go up and just take that ball um, and and do it. You know, do a a carry, a right-handed carry. Um, so when you towards say carry, four. and and just we're on the same page. My impression of carry, I use it in two ways. One, where I just want a player to walk with. They're not really dodging. They're just moving with the ball. Yep. And I use that a lot against zones. Like carry, yep. just like to shift over and just get this yep. zone moving with you. So in other words, it's my way of saying move with the ball, but not really with the intention of going right at the goal. Is that Correct. accurate? Are we on the same page with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the game, you know, it can't be played at 99 miles an hour all the time. Right, know, sometimes so, you just yeah. want the ball to go to the other side of the field. So, okay, right. you got Stephen Brook carrying. Okay, so here we go. Yep, and, you know, so we're, we, we're carrying him towards uh, player number four. So number four, we're going we're gonna to take him, and we're going to drift him down toward the crease. Okay, so four is drifting to the crease. Yep, as he's drifting to the crease, we're going we're gonna to take Mike Lavelle, okay, and we're just going to we're, we're just going to Pop him, kind of pop, and tr and then uh, pop him out behind number four. Okay, so almost coming all the way around. Uh, yeah, I come top side actually, but okay. um, top side. You know, doesn't really matter. It doesn't really make a difference. And, and 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 then you know, scrape off behind number four, and then he's gonna pop, and he's kind of and he's trailing Stephen Brooks right up top now. So he's gonna okay. go a little bit higher. Now, is this part um, of the, the six rules, or is this something you're drawing up out of timeout, like a set thing that they know to do? This is just this is this is something, you know, what we just did. Still, a, what he just did was still a core movement, okay? Okay. But what we what we like to do, um, you know, with with Mike and 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 he's you know he's certainly he has a, a knack for being able to take long poles. Uh, down the uh, down the alley really well, and and you know I I I, I think uh, just you know just from experience that close defenders do not like playing above the restraint line. They don't like playing with their backs to the cage, uh, you know, like like a long pole midi, you know, or defensive midfielder so to speak. Sure. Um, it, it, it's that like kind of you know if that fish out of water feeling. No, it's true uh, for, for everybody. It's we all have our place where we feel a little more natural. Right. You know, that that comfort zone. So so um to have somebody that has that ability um and and to take and to and to take somebody out of their comfort position, then you know, that's that's something that we you know that we would like to take advantage of. Um at the same time, you know, we still have to we still have to maintain some some a semblance of, of motion with this ball. So we're gonna take number two, okay, and we're gonna push him down. Okay. Okay. Um, and then now, as Stephen Brooks is dodging, okay, we're gonna keep Lavelle. We're gonna keep Lavelle as a trail man, but we're gonna keep him nice. We're gonna keep him high. We're not gonna. We're not gonna bring him down inside the restraint box too far. Okay. okay. Probably right. Yeah, that's right about good. Right there. Okay, and as that as uh, Brooks is dodging, and he gets to m closer down towards goal line extended, and he's pushing number two down as he's going as as he's going with him. Number four would naturally go down with Stephen Brooks just because um, you know as the ball goes down, we want to kind of straight line with it. Yeah. Because you want to see what your defenseman's going to do, you know, and then, and and as soon as the decision is made to move the ball, or or right before the decision made to move the ball, we we want to give him something to see. Okay, so we want to show him and and pop for him. Okay, so you want okay? number four going where to pop up now, pop high. Okay. Yep. 
okay? And now that cleared a nice nice lane for number six to flash right where number four vacated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now number uh, and number uh, two. Okay, we would throw down. Number five would push uh, up towards goal line extended. Yeah. Okay. And so go ahead and throw uh, throw up right there. Yeah. Okay. And now what this gives us is it gives us that outvert that I wanted. Right, so now you've got Rumble. an outvert in what I would call almost a classic 1-4-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with your yep. best player dodging from yep. the top on a long pole who is not comfortable against. Yep. I mean, excuse me, the long yep. pole is not comfortable up there. So you've got a great yep. dodging situation. And maybe even the first slide is probably going to be a short stick now in this scenario. And Correct. it just said yeah, the long poles don't like defending up top. Well, in my experience, the short sticks don't like being the first slide. No, very hesitant. Right. Very and once again, it's just you could only practice so much, and every player has right. something they practice a little more than the other stuff. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, so you know, knowing that now, you know, and, and Lavelle being, you know, he's – you know, ambidextrous, but he's you know he's you know left-handed, he left-handed player that can that can dodge righty or lefty. Um, so you know he right now he has the option to go whichever side he wants to go. Generally, we dodge opposite. Okay, but in this situation, we just move the field. Uh, we twisted, you know, we just twisted everything, and and we got everything upside down right now. And you're in so, this perfect alignment, which I'm drawing on the screen, which really gives him the ability to go either way. Right. Um. And and immediately, you know, what Brooks is going to do, and number uh, five is going to do, they're both going to start to pinch in. Okay. Okay. So that's for both of them. Even you know, they're, at the same time, they're both drifting in towards the crease. Okay, and what we're what was what we want to have happen here is we've got to have we want to have somebody vacate okay, the crease, and we want to have somebody show for Lavelle. So we're going to bring number two because Lavelle's going to come down the left alley in a minute. Okay, so we're going to go left. So that'd be down here. Yep. And we're going to have number two just show enough so that he can throw down. I would put him a little, even a little deeper, um, just so, just so that uh, you know it makes that slide longer, um, and it you know it makes a it makes that a, 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 a something that you know he you know he it's an out it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a safety pass for him. Okay. Number five, now we have two guys out here that are both very, very strong left-handed players. Lavelle, actually we had all, every one of them was left-handed, so it really doesn't matter, but uh, six, six left-handed players. <laughs> um, actually, no, I'm sorry, Bucktooth was right-handed. So. Um, uh, so we take number, number five right now, and let's drift him all the way through, okay, and, and we're going to scrape Stephen Brooks as Mike Lavelle's dodging down that alley. Scrape gonna, number six. Yep, we're going to scrape and flash. Okay, so f that, that term flash, okay, where he flashes towards the ball carrier and Lavelle's dodging down towards goal line extended. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll without question get there. Um, and now as Stephen Brooks flashes, okay, and now he it turns him into just it, it, like a trail man as well. Right. If you if you bring if you bring Lavelle down to, to down to that goal line extended, okay. Lavelle doesn't get that shot, but Brooks is trailing him right now. We would take number four and number six, and we would just do a quick exchange, you know, because it's just that, that you know smart crease work there. So one guy's popping, the other guy is. Uh, I'm sorry. Number six is popping, and number four would be uh, would be mirroring Lavelle, and then we have the trail man with our lefty, really really good outside shooter. So if we Which don't get our first, yeah, if we don't get our first love, 
We got a second one that's coming behind it. That's a that's that's a, a pretty good odds-on chance that 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 pass is going to be there because he's an outlet. So shot um, goal. Syracuse, you're the greatest coach ever. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we went over a whole lot here. Um, so I wanted to end it on your sweet goal there. And um, I want to get your closing thoughts. And we can follow up with some more a little bit later. But one thing I did notice, and I just want to end on this question, mm -hmm. you don't use on-ball picks in this. No, no, we don't. You notice uh, we don't do a lot of picking unless it's behind. So you know, should we, we save we, that discussion for another little webinar? Is that a whole other uh, topic? It, it is because it, you know, what it 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 becomes it it, it gets a, played in a lot in, in the big little game. Um, it gets used a lot um, to to create a matchup possibly, but generally, you know, we don't we don't see a lot of picking uh, with 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 this and with. Uh, with with guys that are up above goal line extended, the only place where that would occur would be on the crease. You know where you would got, have guys scraping some slips and some picks with the crease guys. Um, you know when they when they do happen to be to to uh, have a two man when there does happen to be a two man crease, just as a result of what we you know what we created. But that's you know that's again that comes into to general IQ, unless it's something that we're scripting, we're putting in ahead of time, in a 14 offense, and you know we're 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 going to utilize the big little. Um, right, and that whole uh, big little—that's a whole nother discussion, right? Yeah, whole nother animal. You know, it's a short stick and a long stick, and uh, you know, and and utilizing those two men to try to uh, you know to try to get the Dodger uh, the, on, with the short stick. Got it. So, do you have any closing thoughts? As I wrap up with this. Um, you know, I, I just I, I I hope you know what what people can take away from this is that it's not so much what we just did as far as X's and O's is is it's it that what it what it is is the the, the core movements, the terminology that we use, and, and understanding what those are. Will help you even in uh, if you're running set plays. Those core movement term, the core movement tech terminology, is going to help define where you want guys to go. I, I I think there's been there. I I've been to so many camps and clinics where I'm watching coaches out there and they're you know they're trying to get guys to 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 clear through or you know you just hear them just you know, just spitting all over themselves, just you know, get, get, get out of the way, get, get, you know, go somewhere, you know, like, okay, well, you know. <laughs> it's totally here. true. I'm the first, I've heard, yeah. I can't tell you how many times i heard, first rule of offense, get the F out of the way. <laughs> right. Oh, and, and these kids, I mean, they're as they're is honest as the day is long. These kids just don't understand, you know. They, they want to understand. So, so to give them a roadmap uh, by using this terminology, even if you're u using a set play, this is going to help you in that situation because you're Excellent. giving them, you're defining a role. You're saying, okay, you know, Johnny, I want you to pop, pop right now. You know, like then they know to go towards, you know, up, you know, from where they are up towards uh, the the you know, make a, a sharp movement, straight line up towards the restraint line. Um, I think that's I think that's more than anything what I think people can take away from this versus you know trying to trying to duplicate uh, a pattern uh, of what we just did you know you can anybody can take this and tinker with this and, and make their own patterns very easily um, just by using the core movements um, and that's you know that's you know what I would love to see in the game. Uh, evolve into more is is just more of that educational component where you know you're not screaming at the poor kid to you know do something and using you know language that you, you know nobody wants to hear or and screaming you're when you're speaking the king's thing. English is what you're saying yeah right yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> and just you know and 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 just to you know give got give 
give kids a roadmap, give them give them definitions, uh, give yourself you know something else to you know to to tinker with, and 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 I, I bet you guys will find you know that they'll actually really enjoy you know working with something that's that's that that you know these six things, and then and like you and I talked about, it gets up to fifteen uh, that I've you know movements that I've have defined at this point in time and and but these six I think are the most important and if you get these you know can get kids to buy in and start using this terminology then I think you'll you'll get a lot more out of your offense uh, and getting that space that that we talked about right well thank you for all that that's a lot of great info I totally take that to heart so with that My being pleasure. said I'm good for the day how about you I'm awesome. I feel good. It's been a long time since I've talked about this stuff. So Well, I'm yeah, glad you shared it with, with me and all of yours. And everybody so who sees this on YouTube, feel free to leave the comments below. And this is Joe, LaxPlaybook.com. Follow me on the Facebook page, Facebook.com backslash LaxPlaybook. Jeremy's a huge fan of the Facebook page, right? Absolutely. Biggest fan. Absolutely. Yeah. Biggest fan ever. ever. Right. And you're a fan of my Columbia lacrosse work, too. I forgot to mention that this whole time. I am. If anybody I think wants that's outstanding. me going to Columbia, I, I think it's great. I think that you know to bring it to a place like Columbia, where, where uh, you know they're just you know dying for something other than soccer. That's for sure. Uh, and, you know and, that they. <laughs> yeah, and if people want to learn more about my work there, please feel free to contact me. It is not just teaching lacrosse. That is awesome. It's meeting great people, great culture, a lot of dancing, a lot of fun, beautiful beaches. And I can't say enough about it. So when you help in other countries and grow the game, as you know this with your efforts growing the game, you'll get much more than just coaching lacrosse. You'll learn about other people's cultures, lives, and it's really awesome thing to be able to get involved in, using lacrosse to bridge gaps. Absolutely. And I can tell Absolutely. you the story about Pablo Escobar's brother attending a game. Yes. <laughs> but you've got to contact me privately for that. Jeremy's a good story, though, right? It's a good story. Yeah. You know? It's outstanding. I would, I would, I would contact uh, Joe just to hear that story alone. Yes. All right. <laughs> so with that being said, yeah, this is Joe from LaxPlaybook.com signing off. And once again, thank you, Coach Jeremy Durin, for your insight into the Syracuse offense you helped run. Was it two years ago? Three years ago? Oh gosh, now I think more than that. I think it's like six now. Six years ago. Oh. Yeah, we yeah. date ourselves as we get older. Six years turned into one. <laughs> So, but thank thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you everybody. It's Joe, laxplaybook.com. Goodbye.